Hi guys and uh, welcome to a little review that I thought would be of interest to some of you which is the same way we have the sub $20 IEMs uh, that uh, have a, a V-shaped signature and that will be as I like calling them the bouncy ones you know the fun, the engaging, the bouncy ones um, roughly a year and a half ago we had the, 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 the appearance of uh, also IMs priced around that price, that, that value of $20, give or take, uh, and some of them even sub $20, uh, that had a more mature signature, that had a signature which kind of followed the Harman tuning, and it was it was kind of unheard of at the time, you know, it was it was IMs like, uh, and, and IM, the first one that actually came along that did this was the Moondrop shoe. This is one of my shoes. This one I've modified so that uh, it has a detachable cable. Um, you know, and, and the, the truth is that for the $19 that it cost initially, um, there was very little that you could fault. I, I didn't agree with what some people were saying, that it was better than the Aria and so on and so forth. No, I don't. It's, it's, it's uh, two different championships that perhaps the true uh, had a, uh, an equally interesting tuning and that was very capable Yes, we are in agreement with that. But that it was superior to the Aria, no, I don't agree. Anyway, the True uh, had a fixed cable. My one, as you can see, has been modified. Had a nice metal shell, 10 millimeter driver. And, you know, it, it was all about providing uh, the, the, the budget segment of, of the market, a, an IEM that, uh, you know, did vocals well, did instruments well, uh, wasn't a bass monster had lo lo loads of, of detailed retrieval capabilities so its technicalities were above average um, you know lots of twinklies and sparklies like I like saying um, and um, and all of those boxes were ticked there were obviously uh, things that needed improvement the main one being that it wasn't a detachable cable I mean you can get a KZ that has a detachable cable that costs half the price so but anyway um, so I guess uh, the same way as, as KZ has a tendency of launching multiple IEMs within a very small sh sh period of time and, and each one is them, of them is just an, a small increment of performance over the previous one. I guess Moondrop also has their uh, their marketing philosophy. So they launched this so that they could later uh, launch uh, the LAN, uh, which is, uh, the LAN is in effect, although the driver is slightly different, the LAN is in effect a, a true with a detachable cable and costing twice the money. So that was the first one that came along. Then 7 Hertz, riding on the success that they had with the timeless and not so success of the Eternal, they decided to uh, give us the zero. Um, was it a tune by Clinical? Wasn't it a tune by Clinical? Honestly, I, I just, I don't care. Uh, the reality was that it was as well tuned the same way as the True. Uh, it actually has the same driver. The difference here is that the True has a metal case or shell rather. This is as a resin plastic printed shell, whatever you want to call it. And that conferred it a slightly different tonality. Um, and yes, it was that difference in tonality that maybe made it a little bit more engaging. Uh, it, it's not that there were massive differences or, or any, basically any differences with when I, when I show you the graphs you'll see what I mean but you know it gave it a nicer tonality it was it was a nice engaging set it was fun then uh, we had two sets that launched very near each other which was the truth ears Ola okay uh, again a metal shell an 11 millimeter driver um, and this gave us a little bit more bass, a little bit more bass impact, which is very noticeable, uh, but it also made the mids uh, a little bit more, more, a little bit more smoother, a little bit more, uh, instead of you having a forward kind of presentation to the vocals, it was, it was more delayed, uh, and that uh, conveyed it, um, uh, I would say a nice uh, tonality and a nice sense of space. Um, it was a, it was an IEM that unfortunately for some reason wasn't, you know, uh, overly well received. It just I don't know what it was. Maybe because of the fact that you had as well the uh, the um, zero from two years, and you had a few other IEMs that uh, came out at the same time. And 
as is the case many times, you know, when you have multiple IEMs and so many being launched every week uh, in the chi fi uh, world, it, it becomes impossible and some will inevitably go under the radar, although they are pretty good. And, the, and, and this was one of them. You know, nice base presentation, in my opinion. Uh, nice, uh, mid, smooth. It was lacking a little bit, although the graphically didn't seem like it, but it was lacking a little bit in, in, uh, in a little bit of, of treble extension compared especially to the previous two. Uh, although I would go more along the lines of it, it's not lacking, it's just got more bass, so it kind of doesn't let that part of the spectrum shine, shine as much. But anyway, it's a nice IEM and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Then, we had basically, like I said, at the same time, the one year, things one year, that came to try and save uh, the Shimin Lee, the original one, not the encounter, which wasn't a bad IEM, but it just was, it was, it needed a little bit of polishing up in the tuning. Um, and I myself did a retune of that, uh, of that IEM, and, and, and the retune was much, much better. But anyway, that's another story. Uh, so they came out with the one year. Uh, sporting a 10 millimeter gyro as well, and a metal shell. Uh, yeah, the build was okay. I mean, it's you know, it's uh, this you can get this now for like seventeen dollars, so you can't expect the you know uh, great things. It was fine, uh, and what it gave us was a, a sound in terms of the bass, very much like the 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 the, the holla. So nice, engaging mid bass, nice thumpy, way more than the the. the the zero and the uh, the seven hertz zero and the two uh, gave us a nice forward vocals for those that like that uh, that presentation to be a little bit more lively, but at the same time, uh, it it uh, made it perhaps a little bit more um, fatiguing or easier to fatigue, uh, while these two were just. Thin sounding, let's put it that way. Uh, the zero less than the, than the true. Uh, this one was just laid back, relaxed, very chilled, very, you know, mellow. This one was high energy, but that high energy could uh, sometimes, because of the of the points where that energy was focused, 2.5, 2.5, just over 2K, and uh, it, it, it just got a little bit too much. That's not to say that it wasn't a fantastic, and it isn't a fantastic IEM. It is, it is a fantastic IEM. And and that aside, because that's really the only flaw. There, there was nothing really more that you could, you know, point at. It, okay. So now, le le recently, uh, Simgot, uh, and and Simgot is, has been going, has been having some really nice IEMs. I mean, EA five hundred, uh, EA uh, one thousand, the two thousand. They're all nice IEMs, all obviously priced at different points, price points. The, the 500 are around 70, the 1000 are about 170, the, the 200, the, two, the 2000 at around 280 to $300. This came in at $20. And it offers a sound uh, that is very reminiscent of the sound of the, of the EA500. And what that means is, loads of details mids are amazingly well done on this IEM fantastic the mids the vocals the, the tonal balance the the, the 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 timbre the tonality please keep in mind I'm talking twenty dollars and this has those characteristics uh, at at a level which you you don't usually find very easily uh, you know of course, uh, with with today's market, uh, you have more and more IEMs sharing this type of sound and this type of quality to the sound. But the sim got uh, the way it sounds. Um, this yes, I would say is a better IEM than the Aria, for example. Yes, um, unquestionably uh, uh, a better IEM, not by leaps and bounds, but it is a better tuned. And a better sounding I am than the um, Moonjob Aria, and I, and I'm mentioning the Aria because of you know the, the same kind of uh, talk was was done when the Chew initially came out. Um, so yeah, I mean you know the the, the question now is oh but Acros is there like uh, tremendous differences between them, 
do you recommend this if I really own any one of the others? Well, to be honest with you, I mean, it makes sense because it, it shows what is now being capable of, 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 to be obtained at $20. So in that aspect and for that reason alone, it makes sense. Um, if you have a, a moon drop shoe or a zero, um, you know what, it, I would say that the, the, the choice of getting this will be very much dependent on how, you know, do the $20 bug you, do you need them for something else? If they don't, then get it. If you have the uh, the holler, this is a nice side grade and a nice way to complement the holler because the holler doesn't have the mids and the highs that you get in the sim got. So definitely, okay. And as compared to the one ear, uh, if you have the one ear, um, you've got an amazing IM. You know, it's 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 uh, it's it's by no means a. Uh, uh, it, it it probably you could probably say I would probably say it is the best or was the best up to twenty dollars up to now. Um, so again, I will leave the decision of getting this to you whether or not the twenty dollars is something that you know mind spending. Uh, I mean. Is there going to be a huge difference in performance from one to the other? No, I think the biggest difference in performance is that this is more polished. Okay, it's got an, everything is very very well done. Okay, I mean from from the base to the mids to the highs, everything is being really well executed, really well tuned, um, and you 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 notice a, a more refined sound in the sim god than you would do in. In, in the one year um, and and following that chain of thought that I've just initiated uh, let me finish this by saying the following this was definitely the the true was definitely the the, the say the, the grandfather of this of this um, uh, range of IEMs that has been coming up uh, by today's standards it is very much um, uh, ob obsolete because the the sim god is a very big upgrade over it the same thing with regards to the the, the zero i mean the difference uh, is slightly less than with the true but by today's standards it doesn't make sense to buy a zero anymore uh, it, it it's it's a it's a more wiser decision to to buy uh, the the um, the sim got compared to the the shio uh, so, no, sorry the the holla it's like i said this is a night they are nice complements to each other okay and compared to the one year again the difference here is that this is capable of doing everything that does but it does it more polished it does it with more class it does it with more finesse and that's the the biggest uh, uh and the calling card for for the sim god ultimately Okay, anyway guys, I'll just show you now quickly the, the graphs and uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. Hi right, guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, this time to show you the graphs that uh, we were talking about with regards to the, uh, you know, the Chu and, and, and all those other models. Anyway, let's start straight away with the Moonjob Chu. This was the Moonjob Chu, very much that kind of uh, VDSF uh, signature that Moondrop has, which is, is, is look, the, the VDSF signature is, is basically a, a Harman signature, okay? And just for the sake of comparison, I'll just put up here the uh, Moondrop Aria, just so that you guys can can quickly uh, just have a, an idea. Okay, Moondrop Aria. Uh, uh, uh this one there we go uh, let me just change the color so it's more visible okay and now align it okay so you know this is the graph of the aria yes there's a lot of similarities but when people said that the true was a better tuned or maybe a better executed IEM as compared to the to the the Aria, no, it, it's not. It lacks the base that the Aria has. Uh, the overall balance of, of the signature, if you see while 
on the true its cues so that's the minimum point that's the maximum of the bass that's the maximum of the mids so it skews towards being a vocal presentation okay on the true let me just take away uh, sorry on the aria it is the, the bass point the peak of the bass and the peak of the mids is balanced out so you know for me uh, it, it's just it, this makes more sense all right but anyway that's Ari out of the way. So we started with the true, then we got the 7 hertz, zero, basically the same sort of bass. They just slightly changed the way that things were done here in the upper mid and, and treble, uh, and coupled to the fact that we had a different shell that gave us a different tonality. Okay, then let me take this out, I'll leave just the 7 hertz. Then we got the truth years Ola. Okay, and the truth here is Ola gave a space. It, it, it seems by, by looking at this graph that no, it wasn't much, but it gave us a, a lot more bass. Um, and then, as you can see, it was a very gradual, very smooth uh, execution of the mids and upper mids. I mean, it peaks at close to 4K, very, very relaxed, but at a lower energy level than on the, um, than on the um, zero, which also kind of peaks there at very close to 4K. Um, and although you see this energy, you know, past 10, so you would assume, the, you know, there's loads of twinkles and sparkles and so on and so forth, the reality is because there's more base energy from that, from the, from the driver, uh, it kind of mellows this, uh, this whole area yeah, out slightly. So it sounds smoother, you know, not as twinkly-ish, let's put it that way. So I'll take that out I'll leave again just the 7 Hertz and then we got the one ear which was a, a significant increase in bass and and in although you know when I mentioned uh, the peak at 2.5 roughly uh, you know you, you you'll be looking out the graph and you'll be saying to yourself oh, but but across Tony there's no peak there well yes it, there seems to as you can see visibly there's no peak there but it seems that for some reason that area there comes across very energetic. You can also see by the graph that things look balanced out, okay, just like I like, just like is the case in um, in the um, uh, in the in the area like I was showing you a couple of minutes ago. But you listen to this, and <laughs> this is the the graph of the area, okay. You listen to the one ear, and you listen to the area for the sake of understanding what I'm trying to say. And the aria doesn't sound shouty. The aria sounds detailed, nice, full bass, amazing vocals, everything. And the one ear can sound shouty if the, the song that you're listening to is not um, up and up, for example. It, it, the, that sex can get you. But as is the case, you know, what gets me might not get you, you might enjoy it, you might like it. And the, and the truth is, this is a good sounding I am. I'm not trying to now say that it isn't. No, it is a good sounding I am. I'm just trying to position things well, set the stage and position things well, so that you can understand that when we now uh, have something like the uh, sim god, uh, you know, the sim god is just overall more polished you wouldn't think that by seeing oh but it's even got more energy you know that whole area of the three four five six, it's got more it's gonna sound no, you couldn't be further from the truth it sounds very polished and i think the main reason for that is the driver that they're using is a very good driver the driver in the one ear is a good driver fair enough it is but it isn't of the same caliber it, it's not a, a driver of the same caliber as the driver used in the uh, sim got the, the EW100. The EW100 is a really, really good IEM. Um, if there's any flaw that I can put to it is perhaps the, the shell could look a little bit more premium. Um, you know, uh, if, if, you can have a, if you can have a moon drop shoe which is metal and it looks good, if you can have a truth here's hairs and it's metal and it looks good, you could also, uh, I'm sure that Sim God could have also come up with a, 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 an execution of this shell that was just a little bit more satisfying. So there you have it, guys. Um, Sim God uh, EW100P. I'm looking forward to the 200, to be honest. 
fantastic I am, really, really good, plays really well, um, and well deserving of being now the current uh, $20, uh, let's say, mature tuning style I am. Um, how long it will hold that crown, we don't know, because the market is always evolving, but uh, hopefully it will, uh, it will stay in that top spot for a couple of months before something else supersedes it and, uh, and uh, we have a new uh, top dog. Anyway guys, as always, like and subscribe. Any questions you might have, please feel free to ask and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.